man exploits the earth to get crops man exploits everything that he can and that is not considered really immoral in fact we reward those who are the most clever exploiters hmm? if you can exploit the atom to get energy you feel so happy don't you the atom in its own prakritik way was not eager to supply you energy but you took the atom and said i am in need of energy because i am ambitious because i want more comfort so i'll exploit this atom and get energy and if you can break open the atom and get energy you feel happy and you respect and reward those who do all these things so if man gets recognition respect and reward for exploiting why would man spare the woman or even the woman spare the man hmm? but the woman the human female is biologically conditioned to have a nest just as the animal female is but for the animal female the nest is the end of the story nothing happens beyond that the nest is made the young ones are there and then the rest of the prakritik story unfolds and that's it in humans there is society beyond biology so if the woman is in the nest that gives an opportunity to the man to exploit her even more the male bird will not exploit the female bird when she cannot fly because she is taking care of the eggs or the young ones the male bird would not exploit her then but in humans the male is likely to exploit the female when she is sitting in the next in the nest to take care of the little baby the woman will have to go beyond her biological self the nest is the expression of the woman's biological self as long as there is the nest the woman would keep getting exploited unfortunately the woman is still thinking that the nest is her asset that the nest is her protective cocoon the nest is not your friend the nest is not your fortress the nest is your cage the man is just indifferent to the nest the woman should be repugnant to the nest instead the woman is the one who actively seeks the nest and when a human female seeks a nest she is only seeking a prison man does not rebel against the nest man is just indifferent right if there is a nest man says okay i'll come if there is no nest man is okay even with a hotel room man is okay even with a hostel man is prepared sometimes even to sleep under the sky beneath a tree it is the woman who demands a nest the woman will have to actively rebel against the nest as long as there is the nest the woman will remain chained ironically the woman is the one who clamors for the nest if there is a relationship it would be the woman who would keep asking actively darling when are we getting married and after the marriage she will be the one who will keep pestering when will we have a house of our own the woman is her own worst enemy because she is very very biology driven man too is biology driven 
but he abides by his intellect too he abides by his intellect much more than the woman does the woman is extremely biological and that is beautiful in some sense because if you are not biological then you are probably intellectual and the intellect is a bigger curse then it is a boon the woman is simpler more innocent i would dare to say the woman is simple and innocent just as animals are because woman just like animals is biology driven she is emotional and her emotions do not really arise from understanding not even from intellect her emotions arise from her body from her biological conditioning from her hormones look at the way she is attached to the baby that does not involve any understanding all that is pure biology hormones man has no such chains man has no such compulsions it is biology that confines and chains and imprisons the woman as long as the woman keeps herself identified with her body the nest and biology there is no freedom for her as long as the woman keeps thinking that her body is an asset there is no freedom for her as long as the woman keeps thinking that freedom is about flaunting her body there is no freedom for her the woman is the more oppressed of the two genders and therefore the revolution must arise from the woman woman by rebelling against the body will be the harbinger of a revolution that will liberate entire mankind woman and man included both but if you will ask me between these two genders which one is likely or which one rather must initiate the revolution i would say the woman because the woman is the more oppressed of the two once the revolution begins obviously man too will be liberated but just as woman gives birth to the man woman will also need to give birth to the freedom of man man will not be able to give birth to his own freedom freedom too will be born out of woman that does not seem to be happening woman remains terribly body identified and that which you call as modernity or liberation or even feminism is unfortunately even more body centric it's just that now the body centricity is a little hidden there is only one way to go beyond the body and that is the way of truth the way of spirituality all other ways go from the body to the body so you can go from veiling to revealing but you are just going from the body to the body what were you veiling the body and now what are you revealing the body all this great liberation movement has only taken you from the body to the body so there is no liberation at all you are just being cheated and fooled the only way the woman can be liberated 
is the spiritual way, the spiritual route. Ah, now that sounds so old fashioned, doesn't it? In fact, you would love to say that religion is the curse of woman. That using religion, the woman has been confined and oppressed and what not. But all that was false religion. Don't throw the baby out with bath water. If the woman can be saved, it is only through true spirituality. Because spirituality alone can take you out of your body identification. 